In this world, the world in which we, we live in, we will have trouble. But take heart. Take heart. For I have overcome the world. In me, you have peace. In the world, you have trouble. What he's really saying here, in this world that's full of trouble, in the midst of it all, you will have peace in me. If you listen, if you listen to what I'm saying, my peace, I give you. I've often said that Jesus is not an Indian giver. He doesn't give and he doesn't take it away. He gives and we give it away. He gives and we give it away. He does. That's him, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Whoop. There you go. <laughs> Understand this. Ephesians 2 14 says, For he himself is at peace. Jesus. Jesus is at love. At love. Before we got saved, none of us knew what love was. None of us knew how to give love. You can't give what you've never received, can you? No. You can't. It's impossible to give. If you've never received love, how can you give love? And I would say even this love that we're talking about here, the unconditional love of God into our hearts, it makes us easier to love others. None of us can forgive until we forgive, receive forgiveness. No power that. Do you know what they've done to me? Mm. No way. Well, of course they will not hell. And then Jesus comes in. You receive forgiveness. And all you have is love. Yeah. Because you experience the forgiveness of God in your own life. You understand what you have been forgiven of. Yeah. And when you understand what you are after being forgiven of, it's easier to forgive others. Yeah. Don't be the unmerciful servant. <coughs> Don't hold on forgiveness in your heart. It's that room in that house that probably needs pushed out today. Amen. Amen. Listen to what it says in 1 John 4, 16. God <coughs> is God is love. And whoever abides in love, we've got to start with abides in God. No, abides in love. God wants us to love. God wants us to love those around us. God wants us to love those who wreck our heads. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah, he does. He wants us to love those who use us. Spoilfully use us. God wants us to love those who say all manner of evil against us. God wants us to love those who slap us across the face. Serious stuff, isn't it? Listen to what he says. Whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. All of this is impossible without Jesus. It's all impossible. You can forget. Can't be healed. Cannot be delivered. If there's folks in this room and you're tormented, you're tormented. You've done everything in your power to receive freedom. You've done everything. 
and still there's crazy going on in your life. You cannot get freedom without Jesus. You cannot get deliverance without Jesus. You cannot get peace without Jesus. All of these things are impossible. And we as believers in Christ Jesus need to accept, listen and walk in the way that he has ordained in us. The way of love. God is love. And all who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. Joy. Jesus is a joy. Let me tell you, folks, we're going to have a little thing here. Let me just tell you here. There's a lot of people in this room and there's joy lacking in your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, not amen. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not agreeing with you on that one. I'm having a group now that. But the word of God says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Listen to this scripture, right? Psalm 16, verse 11. Listen to what it says here. And just, just examine yourself. It's all I'm asking. Just examine yourself in this scripture this morning. It says, you make known to me the paths of life, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. You make known to me the paths of life. Listen to what it says here. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Can I ask you a question this morning? Is that joy lacking in your life? It may be that you're not in the presence because God is not a lawyer. It says in your presence there's fullness of joy. Jesus wants us to have a cups overflowing in the midst of the madness and the craziness that we're going through in life. He wants us to be having peace. Yeah. And here he says, in his presence, there was fullness of joy. Have you got joy in your life? <coughs> Serious. We have to ask ourselves this question, don't we? Is that joy? <coughs> The joy overflowing in your life. Maybe you're not in the presence of Jesus. Seriously. Joy. He says, in, in my presence there's, there's fullness of joy. He says, at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. of God. Are you spending, like, come on. You come into church on a Sunday morning and you half sleep, half come. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Comes a religious duty. You're not spending time in the, in the presence of God all week. And you just come in and two pence walk on a Sunday. Fall out with a scratcher. Hoping that Mark sings in June. And a good song. But seriously. Hope Hammy's not in the horrors up there. With the mic in his hand. Expecting to get off somebody else. And not Jesus. Yeah. In him. There is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. In Jesus, there is fullness Amen. of joy. There's no joy in your life because Jesus is absent. He's absent. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. Yeah. At his right hand, there was treasures untold. You get what I'm saying here? 100%. Strength. Jesus. Is there a strength? Hello, my at this time. You know, I went to a conference 
years ago. And I was in the conference, and it was warm in the conference, so I was sleepy. Why? <coughs> One of the biggest insults I've ever got off Christians. So I'm in the conference, and I says to this couple, I couldn't keep, I was goofing in the conference. So I said to the, this couple that were there that I used to go to the conference with, it was about 15 years ago. So I'm just, I'm exhausted. Very warm in here. Right? Goofing and falling asleep. To be listening to your man. And your woman turns around and bold as brass and says, it's not that at all, son. It's just that you're not spiritually mature enough to listen. And just stay awake. <laughs> Forgive. <laughs> Move. A boy. But the thing about it is, is this. If there's no joy in your life, you have to question whether you're in the way, the truth, and the, the life. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm not being smart. I'm not judging. Them. I'm not condemning anybody. Jesus says, in the midst of all your troubles, you'll have peace. If you've no peace, there's something not right. Mm -hmm. And it's not on his end. It's on your end. If you are still in bondage, and he is the deliverer, and his word is true, let God be true, and everybody else the lawyer, it's not on his part. It's on your part. And the Bible says, examine yourself. Examine yourself. Whose presence are you in? When you're having all these wonderful, falutin ideas. If there's no joy in your life, honestly, if there's no joy in your life and you're up there doing this, that, and the other, if there's no joy in your life, you're not in the presence of God. Honestly. Probably relying on something external to bring you joy. Because joy doesn't come from the outside. Did you know that? Where does joy come from? The Lord. The Lord. It comes from the inside. It comes from the inside. It's in you. It's inside you. Every one of us that are born of the Spirit of God have this joy, have this hope inside us. I'm going to just maybe finish here. We have to carry on. We are we? Yeah. Yeah? Strength. Jesus is our strength. Amen. At least the joy was getting me to see. on the worship team in two or three weeks ago. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. This is for every one of us. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, says Jesus. I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. You know, whose voice are we listening to if we're being dismayed? If his presence... I said this to Sharon, I think it was yesterday. If I am in fear for my life and I hire in an army of security to keep me safe, yeah? If I look out my front window and I see ten big blokes, six foot, with machine guns, then look out my back window and I see the same there. I'm actually going to feel secure. Amen? I'm going to feel safe. How much more should we be feeling safe and secure knowing that God is in me? Amen. The God of heaven's arms is in me. Why should I be dismayed? Why should I be fearful when I know that he holds me in his righteous right hand? Why should I not allow the enemy of, to rob me of his peace when he is my peace? Why do I allow myself not to dwell in the presence of God, being filled with his joy to overcome all that this world throws at me. 
Why am I allowing that in my life when he has freely given it to me? The devil is a robber. Yeah. He's a thief and he's a liar. He says he comes to steal, to kill and destroy. And he doesn't want you being a shiny, jealous, holy and honourable and righteous unto God. And he will whisper in your ear, this is the way, follow me. That road over there is too narrow. But there's no life there. Mm. Jesus is my strength. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has given me already the victory. Amen. He is my light. In the midst of all the darkness, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? Jesus is God. Yes. All of them. Off of two scriptures, yeah. Galatians 4, or Galatians 6, 14 and 15 says this. Listen, I'm talking about Jesus here this morning. Reconfigure the attitudes of your mind. Start believing who you were and what he has done and what is he what he is doing in your life. Amen. Amen. No longer listen to the lawyers of the enemy. Listen to the truth of God and who he is and you will walk in victory all the days of your life. It says you will not stumble and you will not fall Amen. if you walk in my ways. Yeah. Reconfigure the attitudes of your mind. Start thinking about yourself as he sees you. Amen. Amen. May I never boast, he says, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, which the Lord has been crucified unto me, and the Lord, and me unto the Lord. Listen to what it says. It's talking about religious stuff here. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. The only thing that matters in this life is that you've been made new at the cross of Jesus. A new life, a new attitude, a new way of thinking, a new body, a new mind, a new way. Listen to what Habakkuk says. Though the fruit tree does not hold, though there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no free fluid. Though there are no sheep in the pen, no, no cattle in the stalls. If you haven't got nothing, let me tell you today, having Jesus is everything. <laughs> This man, Habakkuk, learned how to worship God. I don't care what I have around me. Once I have Jesus, I have enough. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question today, amen?